welcome to the second episode of the season podcast now um i'm adrian i'm joined by chef tushar sood and we're very lucky to have dr evan taliat as our special guest for today right thanks so much for joining us today by the way pleasure is mine so uh, so i think it'd be ideal to put a little bit context on uh, who you are your early influences your background right so could you tell a little bit more about uh how you know everything came to be how what was the first piece of the puzzle right so as you introduced me rightly my name is evan i'm a chef by profession um but alongside with my work as a chef i also teach so we are also the co-founders of uh, lavon academy of baking science and pastry arts which is the first academy in baking sciences in india and probably the first few academies that they had in the in asia uh we started out of a passion to disseminate knowledge in terms of baking science and pastry arts which was a completely a new thing that one of time because when we wanted to do uh, when we wanted to study baking science and pastry we were forced to go abroad and uh, learn this but when we came back we realized that there is no place for us to practice what we learn so we thought that we should be the first to uh, generation who is going to make this change that you know this brain drain can be stopped uh we will by introduce an academy obviously there will be a world class uh patisserie or a boulangerie that is going to come into the city and uh, we decided to grab that opportunity to have both so we had an academy initially that we started a cafe and uh, i mean we are we are winning the times award for the last 8 years and so on and so forth so but the idea was to disseminate a world class education and also to uh, keep the talented uh, indians uh, at home uh, not to leave the country but to to contribute to the country's wealth and uh, so on and so forth and you've done a great job like the lavon cafe is as famous as the academy right uh, so it's it's you are uh, fulfilling both the sides the professor side and the chef side we are uh, but this is just a quarter part of our bigger vision needs so oh, i'm very excited for the bigger vision <laughs> to be honest but uh, if like before we go dive deep dive into lavon and uh, how it came to be if a lot of you don't know chef is a polymath of the culinary universe he has a phd in enology 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 which is a study of wine he was an assistant professor at christ he also uh, He's done an MBA in HR as and well. MBA in HR as well. So, uh, like going to the initial part of going to France with that scholarship, how was that experience, and how did it? Because it was it's so it in the start of your career right. that it shapes your ideology, right? right? And what you want to bring on the table. Right. So, how was the experience there? And I also learned that you went to Malaysia. There is a follow up question to that. How is the culture difference? A, there is a culture difference in France from Indian. but also there must be a culture difference between malaysia and france itself right? right so how is that overall experience for you fortunately or unfortunately the the industry that i represent or all of us represent need uh, uh consistently uh improvising uh skilling uh, aspect of it so you are never concise with yeah i know everything about cuisine i know everything about indian cuisine i know everything about bakery i mean there is no question from that mm. um the the question is whether you are uh, abreast with what is happening around you and as part of it yes the uh, my my initial one obviously it is at my culinary school the culinary college where i was study uh, but it was a hotel management so that mm. we had to uh, focus on every subject that includes every aspect of hospitality because it was bachelor's in hotel management but at the end of the day uh, when i was looking at myself uh, to take a decision on what exactly i want to be or what kind of a contribution i want to do it to this world and i decided i to be a chef but initially i was a hot kitchen chef mm. everything changed when i went to europe and then uh, they did a a proper analysis of my brain and then they realized that my brain is more towards art aspect of it rather than just cooking the operation how did they part. do that though how did they do so, a brain analysis so there's a there's a proper way of uh, uh, doing this using uh, psychological techniques mm. 
where they try to understand which side of the brain is more powerful. Right. And they gave me six options. One of them was bakery and pastry. And then they gave me coaching, training in all these five departments that wow. included uh, cuisine also, yeah. uh, including included in something called as uh, culinary math uh, and uh, you know, culinary logistics. <laughs> and, uh, and out of this, they, they analyzed and they told that you are doing really well in bakery and pastry. Mm. So someone who is getting into bakery and pastry, the first option is to be a pastry, pastry chef. So I also started as a pastry chef. Started with pastry. Now I'm doing uh, Boulangerie baking sciences, uh, baking sourdoughs, baking breads, breading um, uh, Viennoiseries. Do you think bakery has a more creative side than pastry? Because it's, it is also as scientific in terms of recipes, right. but you can experiment more, right? right. With but pastry is more onto an artistic uh, aspect of it. Hmm. Like it is more of a, a creative artist kind of a job. The visual aspect. Where there's no science involved. Yeah. Right, right. Whereas in baking, it is much more of a science as well as art. I mean, I was exactly looking for a space where I can use my um, scientific brain as well as the artistic brain. And uh, that's why I, I mean, it, I just started six years back being a, a complete baker okay. per se. Um, but yeah, uh, that exactly. Which is such a good example of that, you know, it's never too late to learn something new or dive into something. 100%. Because I think that's a major issue in our industry, right? People right. pigeonhole themselves into one cuisine that I'm an Indian chef right. or I am a Conti chef. Right. And then even if they have the, all of us have an experience of eating Indian food. Right. But if you tell them to cook it, they're like, you know, I'm right. used to Conti. Right. I always found that like a little uh, weird in the way that if, if this is what your education is, then every right. cuisine is coming from the same base of education, yeah. right? So that way, it's so cool that you... I think you... things are changing now. Now, people want to uh, eat great food, whether it has been Indian or Western or uh, Asian or whatsoever it is. But the champion word is great food. Hmm. So let it be bakery, let it be pastry, let it be uh, cuisine. At the end of the day, if, if your food is good, the people will come from Delhi to Bangalore to eat. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, guests for us who comes all the way from Delhi on a weekend to have our uh, croissant in the morning and leaving the evening. <laughs> so, so. But yeah. you had mentioned uh, like there are different cuisines when, you, when it comes to culinary side. There are different cuisines that uh, differentiate each other. But when it comes to pastry or baking, uh, are there different uh, categories or different ways you could category, categorize it by origins as well right. and is the divide as like you know as significant as it is compared to the culinary side? I think uh, if you ask me the culinary from one region to another region is only different when it comes to oh. we are divided by states divided by so many cuisine but within that cuisine every the place that I come from I come from uh, an Aklam in, in, in uh, Cochin, in Kerala. And uh, 100 meters from my house, that particular family cooks the same food different. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, you are coming from that kind of a background. I mean, right. your, your country is uh, blessed with different techniques, different cuisines, different right. flavors, but it's all directly uh, related to the, the climate or the environmental condition that, that you have in that particular area which uh, decided the cuisine of that particular place. But uh, I mean, one life is not enough to learn Indian cuisine mm. in so, Indian totality. Forget food. Probably if I leave for 100 years, the amount of the knowledge as a chef that I have on um, culinary India Hmm. would be less than 2%. And every day is a, a, a new new way. Hmm. Um, someone else was talking about, today, this morning, was talking about why can't we introduce uh, potato chips with chocolate. Chocolate. And potato chips. I mean, when I, when I was looking through, and I understood that it's already there. In the yeah. There are Michelin chefs who are already doing potato chips with with the saltiness and the chocolate works quite I mean, well. I mean, it's an eye-opening for me. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't mean that I don't know anything about the cuisine. Doesn't mean that I know everything about it. That is something which my 
my dad asked me to do two things. One is every salary that you are getting, buy a book. Let it be small book or it will be a book. I make it a practice that I have a lot of books. So every month uh, I go and purchase one, one, one thing. Uh, if I can't buy a physical book, now there are digital books that is under. Uh, my daughter, dad always wanted me to write a book. And that is also in, in, in process. In the, after 12 years of my research, the, this particular book is coming out now uh, on 15th of February. The new you book. heard it exclusively on season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one else knows about it. Uh, not even students. I mean, probably my partners know about it because I mean, I, 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 it is impossible for me to do research without uh, their concern or their, their, their thought processes. Uh, but uh, yeah, a baker's journey. Um, the science and art of baking, that book is for about 50%. I'm very excited to read that. <laughs> As you mentioned that, you know, your family was very focused on academics and education. So how did you end up going towards the kitchen part and the baking side? Right. And did it take you some time to convince them that this is what I want to do? Right. But like, how did it all start for you as a uh, person who hasn't joined the industry yet? So there are two things. Andrew. The first part is that now you have come back from Europe and you don't have a place for you to practice what you love. Because mm -hmm. um, probably we are in terms of culinary, that point of time in 2005, I rightly uh, told the chef who interviewed for uh, Chef Hemant Obrocha. <laughs> when, when he asked, uh, what do you want to do now? You are you're back from um, France and I don't think we have a platform to, to, to help you. I said, uh, that's right, but I want to start in India. And uh, I want to see where this journey is taking us. Having said that, I wanted a place to practice what I learned. Uh, that's why I joined uh, uh, the hotels. Uh, but I was so fortunate to have these mentors at every point to tell, yeah, I think you should look forward uh, to in, in this particular angle and so on and so forth. And he told that you'll be a great teacher. Uh, your culinary skills, it has to be good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got an opportunity to work with Chef Oberoi's. But more than that, he's the one who told that, why can't you look into training people? So as part of this entire journey, um, every Thursdays, we had to take a class for the fellow chefs hmm. at the hotel. Hmm. And then uh, I still remember, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, we used to sit in the kitchen and we didn't have a place. Or there were training rooms, but this is was a kind of an internal thing. Mm. And then I realized that the chefs who is listening to me actually enjoyed what I was talking. And then uh, with his blessing, I got that transfer to Bangalore. And then I was teaching at Christ University after that short stint in Bangalore. Uh, start teaching and I, I joined as a, uh, as a teacher uh, on part time. Then I realized that I think I can contribute well. And at that point, I realized that there is no professional school in India who can disseminate knowledge in baking some something. The second part is that I'm still a student. Every two years, I make a point that I go outside India to learn something and come back. So you asked me the, the previous question and what I was doing in Malaysia. Hmm. I was actually a student uh, learning the, the aspects of uh, sugar and hmm. sugar art. Hmm. Uh, Recently, that is one month back, I went to Spain to learn about Panatone. Two years back, I went to Italy to learn uh, gelato, sobeys and frozen music. So now, uh, next part, I'm going to Japan in 2024, uh, end of 2024, to learn about Japanese sweets and confusion. Wow. So every two so, years, I make a point that... So learning journey never stops for you? I don't think it should stop for anyone. anyone. Especially as a chef. And you know that one day if you don't cook, your hands are actually itching and going back to kitchen mm -hmm. and do something of that matter. And then, and then you sleep with that knowledge. So you didn't know you wanted to teach per se until you came back to India, right? And you started the part-time. I stuff, mean, right? it happened uh, much more later. Okay. 2005, I joined the uh, hotel industry uh -huh. in India. Then I was working for almost about three and a half years. And then Christ College that time right. asked me, 
we don't have a teacher for baking science and pastry art. Why can't you join? Uh, you can also do your masters. Ma masters was always there, top of my mind. Um, and then I became a part-time teacher. Also, I was doing my MBA in human resources. At the same. After MBA in human resources of two years, I decided that, yeah, this is the calling. Mm. Uh, I should be a teacher more than anything else. And started teaching at Christ full time. Just then in 2012 is when, with two of my students, we started. Yeah, because that story is so interesting. We were just discussing this off uh, the camera. And uh, the fact that Davon, Abe, Chef Vinesh and uh, Chef Vijoy are your students. Yeah. So that's a different approach. Usually people are looking at their peers to open up a, a dream school or a cafe that they Similar have. level of experience. And, but you chose your students. Mm -hmm. And uh, also that it started from a, like a very small, you know, uh, it's not like there was heavy budgets involved. Like you were telling me you saved each salary and all of you combined your resources to start at a house in a small... I mean, more than anything else, I was so fortunate to have students like Vinesh and Lijo and uh, it is just the... It is just the fortune that clubbed us together. You know, uh, they had so many options uh, to choose from, right? They, they didn't have to... Uh, do baking and pastry, but yeah. it is their passion which is converted into entrepreneurship that gives double joy for us. Uh, but um, e even if 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 you didn't, I wouldn't have started a partnership with my student. They would have started something <laughs> something um, even better than probably Lavon because they were born with that that kind of a talent to to be a great entrepreneur. In terms of hospitality or whatever they are going to do, I'm sure that they will do well. But my uh, point is that we were so fortunate to to combine three of our different skills. Uh, for example, let's say if you see uh, Lijo. Lijo is a man of few words, but the organizing skills that he has, the operational efficacy that he showed through his work. Skill of uh, Vinesh being uh, a great chef. And may adding my my part as a teacher. So we curved all the three together. Lijo takes care of the entire lawn. Uh, Vinesh takes care of the entire cafe and the new menus and the every four months we change our menu. Oh wow. Uh, academy wise adding new programs to may, adding a lot of meaning in what we are doing. I mean it is so fortunate that you know Christ College was was uh, a part of our journey mm. and that we met there and we decided to start something on when while they were doing the practicals i decided that i think we should start something together and i didn't take it seriously i just told this right. just as a passing right but after two years uh, these two have shown up and they told yeah we are ready let's start <laughs> this i said what i think we, you decided in 2010 that we are going to start something together so okay let's do this so 2012 was when it kind of finally kicked, kicked off, shaped up and such and was officially running and such, right? So this was in Indranagar as well, the, right. an older building, right? right? I had read somewhere that um, before, like a month before, you were actually supposed to open doors towards a few students. Yeah. You guys had to shift out of the building or something? Yeah. So 2012, Jan, uh, June 23rd is when we started. Right. Lavon, where okay. our parents came from different parts of the country nice. and uh, they pray, we pray together and we started Lavon. I mean, there's no official inauguration or mm. whatsoever it is. But this is our second Lavon. Sure. Actually, we were supposed to start at a, in, a, in a different location. But then the, the owners of that particular space told that, you know what, we can give the space only for one year. Because... Their daughter is coming back and she got a bit of plan uh, to start something big. But they were also supporting us. There were a lot of, uh, what do you say, uh, constructional uh, deficiencies in that building. And they didn't want to tell us. Instead, they were telling that, you know what, start looking for a space <laughs> because we can give this only for one year. Okay. They were inter uh, indirectly helping us to to open Lavon body yeah. district. So probably if it had started there, probably it would have been in, in a much more a different format altogether. Yeah. And then 
this place started that is in Toglo. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to the adjacent uh, building after after four years. Okay. And that is what you see building the is bigger today. building of Lavon and Sansa. We have a production as big as the academy is, where we produce products, bakes and pastries for our uh, four cafe. We just recently added the lender. Uh, we are opening in Delhi. So yeah, oh, congratulations. congratulations. That's great. We are opening in Delhi. Then. We are opening in Delhi in Defence Colony. Hmm. Uh, we have a, a smaller format, a different format of academia in Lajpat Nagar. It's about three kilometers from Defence Colony, Defense the cafe. Okay. Because the cafe is also run by the students. Oh. So we call it as a practice True. school okay, where okay. the students get an opportunity to be an entrepreneur. To experience the nuances of different operational aspects of. So now technically this is what I tell our students. Uh, we teach you how to make a brownie. We will also teach you how to sell a brownie. So that is what Lavon mm. is, which is a, a very new format in terms of uh, education um, in India or for that matter in Europe also. They taught us how to make a brownie, but they didn't teach us how to sell it. Right. right. That is what we are clubbing mm -hmm. as far as Lavon education. So, yeah, in terms of like, you know, the outlet expansion and in general expansion, um, now that you've opened in RMZ recently in Delhi as well, do you guys try to keep the same format as your current uh, cafes and such? Or are you always looking to like change it up and experiment with new things in general? So, uh, the second aspect of like, experiment with the new thing uh, that we do every four months in terms of a menu execution is coming. Right. But uh, the format remains the same for four months uh, during that time where it is being centrally produced so that you know we can maintain the quality and the quantity mm. uh, across our uh, cafes right um, so the the croissant that you that you get in St. Marks or croissants that you get in Whitefield, Bellendur or Indranagar it is the same because it is from a single space yep. that way we maintain the quality of the products right point number two the new inspirations that I mean as I told every three seconds there's a new opportunity in the hospitality sector. So is something new which we think that it is feasible, mm -hmm. which we think that it is our responsibility to be part of our cafe or the academy that we add every four months. So uh, there's a new menu, there's a new concept, there is a new thought process, new flavors, uh, new approach. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, this is also, Lavon Academy is also one of the favorite places for international chefs to come and take a masterclass. And we also, attend this class. We also uh, take inspiration from them and we try to incorporate it as part of our menu. That is something which we, we do it on our regular basis. Mm. How, like how much time did it take from the first initial house Lavon for you to reach to a level where uh, you realize that okay we need to scale up and uh, the inflow because we were discussing off camera and you said after a few days it became that there were so many inquiries coming in that right. you guys had to uh, scale up accordingly. So how much was that time period from starting Lavon to it blowing up the way it has? So the first batch, um, we got this building partially ready in the month of uh, April. Uh, then May we announced the program called as Baking Science and the Pace to Health Diploma. And then we had only three students. And what you have to understand here is we never advertise Lavon anyway. Hmm. We, we had only Facebook, now we have Instagram, and we have our website. Apart from that, we never made an attempt because we believe that education is something which we should never be advertised. Advertise. That is point number one. You will not see even a sponsored post of Lavon uh, as far as the Instagram is concerned because we believe that if your education is good, the people will come from anywhere. And we have students from across the world. So the first batch, we had only three students. Then uh, they spoke about Lavon. And the next batch, we had 12 students. And the maximum is 12. Mm -hmm. And then we were forced to increase the seats because this we had more than 800 queries for 12 seats. So was and that just word of mouth? Did people just... Just word of mouth, mm -hmm. Facebook, website. Right. And then uh, it was not, then we had to take alternate days, we had to take 12 students and 12 students because the students say that, okay, we are, put us in wait, uh, waiting list, we want to be part of the next trip. Yeah. 
And we realized that uh, 12 is not enough. The baby suddenly became adult. <laughs> you know, uh, Lavon has a baby and coming. Mm, yeah. And then uh, we had only two instructors moved to eight instructors. And now Lavon family as a community, we are more than 200. Wow. So how many batch, like what? Is the, the, the diploma, um, if you minus the COVID batches, we couldn't take hmm. two, two, two years. Hmm. Uh, this is the 21st batch. And the six weeks, we are at the 20, 42nd batch. 40 seconds. Six weeks. Every six weeks, we have a mm. new batch. New. And how many people in one batch now, starting from three to? Three to now, we have 80 in a batch. 80. Uh, six weeks, we take 20 students in a batch. Seven batches of 20 students in a year. Mm. And two batches of diploma. And then we have weekend program. That is almost about uh, 120 batches. Every Saturday and Sunday, we have classes. So this is obviously like a, a big jump, right, from mm -hmm. when it first started. So I mean, we are not expecting. Okay. We yeah. never. Th so everyone, when we were opening Lavon and um, everyone told, this is not going. All the every industry personnel told, this is not going to work. So the only uh, excuse that we wanted to give that, yeah, we are just below thirty. We are just twenty-two. Uh, I mean, Vinesh and Lijo, they were uh, twenty. 24 years of age, and I was 28 years of age. And then um, I said, if it doesn't work, we'll go back to the industry. And then we'll work in the industry. But there is nothing wrong in giving right. a try. Yeah. And that's how, the, the, that's how it all started. But um, we had the confidence that if it's not going to work out, we had the entire energy and the health in the world that you know we can go back to the industry and contribute to the industry. I think that, All what we yeah. wanted was we want to be part of the hospitality industry in this way or another way. I think that would have helped a lot, like trying without the fear of failing, right? Yeah. Just wanted to try and play according to your passions and all. And then uh, we don't have any loans. We didn't take even one rupee from the bank mm. to start this. All thing is that we were answerable to our parents and we wanted to give it back to our parents, mm. the money that we have taken. Um, I took very little amount from my parents, but this 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 journey is not completed. I mean, it's not at completed yet. But without the support of our parents, I mean, if the parents would have told that nothing do it, mm. you spent a lot of money on your hotel management. Now, on top of this, we have to pay for your uh, entrepreneurial venue. Mm. They would have told no, mm. but they believed. In it. They they managed to give us some loan amount to, to start this, and we have given it back, paid them back. Without interest. Yeah. But one thing that you pointed out, which is really nice about skill based industry like ours, is that when you want to try out, like what you said, if it didn't work, you at least have your skill set to fall back on. You know, I can cook food. One thing I actually missed while we're talking about your scaling journey and how you guys plan to grow as well. Um, even in the earlier days, was what point did you guys kind of uh, think to yourselves, hey, um, you know, it's time to grow a little bigger? And uh, we'll need to kind of like look for funding from that for, for that from actual investors and such. Right. So how did that kind of work out? Uh, how was the response from like investors, or how did that kind of play out? There were a lot of investors who have approached us, but till 2023, it's all from Lavon. We never uh, took an external funding oh, to. Yeah. To generate money uh, to open another cafe or whatsoever it is. But now in uh, in North, we realize that more than the money, we need support in terms of a culture is concerned. The network and the people over there. All that. Right. And uh, we got a right partner in, in uh, Delhi, only for Delhi. And we decided to uh, cooperate and coordinate with them for Lavon operations in Delhi. Other than that, whatever it is, it is completely it is sustainable. We, we don't owe even one rupee to anyone. There's no bank loan. There is there's nothing. But what we did was whatever it has come to Lavon, we have put it back in terms of its uh, operational requirements or concern. Mm. Um, I mean, that's that's the wonder about this, this brand is all about. So as you mentioned that, you know, earlier there were just three colleges that you could uh, or MTs that you could apply to. I think the change in culture because of social media and everything is also that back 
in our time like yours raj if you had to do something around food then commercial kitchen was your only way in that's right right if you want to do it could be journalism it could be uh that you were trying to open an academy but the entrance was commercial kitchen which was demotivating to a lot of people that's like right. you said right you're forced to learn uh skills that might deep motivate you from what you are actually trying to do right and now i think that's changed is because uh now there are so many different sectors that you can go into if you want to do food now there is a food journalism there is social media there's everything food photography to food photo- so at least that has changed which is uh, making it easier for people to realize that am i going into food for the commercial aspect right. or am i going into food for journalism or everything which wasn't really uh, available on our end aside from social media and the other skills and qualities that you had mentioned um what i hear from a lot of like young students who want to get into industry is that they want to get their training or their education in a country that's abroad right like paris for example or or different other uh, cities or countries that are renowned for pastry and baking so what are your two cents on this do you think that like you know he or she will have an added advantage when entering the industry if they get their training from there or does it really not make so much of a difference it make a lot of difference um when you are training abroad mm-hmm. uh the idea is you are seeing the freshness of the freshest ingredient the water is different for example let's say um flour in france right flour in france this is something t45 t55 60 that's a different world altogether yeah, yeah. um all these things are being taught in a theory part here but at the end of the day i mean it is very easy for us to import this flour there is no challenge in making a person out of a flour that has been imported from france okay ha huh. make a person from a flour that is available 100 kilometers around you that's it. that is what we are teaching here we are worried about our environment we are worried about our... there is no challenge in in importing this flour that would have been the easiest thing to do and the price is almost the same it is not that it is probably 15 20 rupees more than the indian flour when you are importing in bulk my point here is it is very easy but now will they know why this croissant was created hmm. this anthropology is very important for us the the science is very important one art is very important when you are going to club the anthropology science and art that is when you become a great chef. otherwise you will become a chef right right but you to to have this emotions right when you are cooking for that you have to see the place from where this has originated how the flour is been treated differently the organic flours and giving the same effect without adding a glide without adding an improver or a stabilizer for that matter that is what the students have to see mm-hmm. and once you join the industry it is very difficult for you to detach from the industry and go back to another to country. a country to yeah. learn and come back yeah it is better that as part of the course you one go and see and experience it and it is one life and i would say i used to tell the students that before you die you have to experience a place from where for example let's say an opera key you should see where a, a opera garnier is and mm-hmm. um you you see a sacker tor go to austria see the sacker town linser tor go to the linser town and see what is it mm-hmm. sacker tor for that matter go and see where why frank sacker has created this it's there is a reason for yeah. go and see black forest gato there's a huge difference between a oh, real yeah, black forest and what, what we are getting in every birthday yeah, yeah. cherry yeah. one <laughs> not, <laughs> not, right? <laughs> not even a cherry right not even a cherry it's not even a cherry so point being is that it is important to see and yeah. it's one life Makes and uh, you you can bring your emotions and you can connect to a dish better if you have seen the origin of this particular pastry is the origin of a particular bread is you can connect it better and you can cook more liberally more authentically if you have worked although yeah although that makes complete sense uh some of the students uh who i've interacted in the past who have done their formal education in france and such 
uh, they told me how, I mean, I heard another story as well, right? Like in terms of finding opportunity as well over there, it was comparatively much harder uh, being a foreigner over there as well. Uh, I don't know if you know, but there's this rule in France where if a bakery or anyone was to hire a restaurant as well, if they were to hire any international foreign national, uh, they would actually have to make a posting, like a job posting on the newspaper, and only they have to prove that they can't find anyone from that job posting. And only in that case can the government um, issue a visa or something for that right. foreigner or so. So our time it was the same. The same. So first you have to um, advertise in France. Yeah. Now if you don't have takers, first you have to go to the employment exchange. You have to, ad you have to tell the employment exchange that we have a requirement. Mm. If they can't fill it, then they advertise in France. If that is not happening, then it advertised in Europe. From Europe, wow. it goes to another continent, and last is Asia and Africa. Wow. So now, why is that? Because there, there's a lot of cost. Because now if I'm going to train, there's a cost for that particular restaurant. They have to give you visa. For visa, you have to pay so much of money. Right. Then it is not like India that, you know, you can take cheap, so-called labor, mm -hmm. I shouldn't be telling. Uh, but that's what the truth is. They have an equality. I mean, that's the watchwords of the French Revolution. Yeah. So, okay, now you are getting uh, 13 euros. As a trainee from India, I should also get in 13 euros. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But My time it was 9 euros. Nine. Now it is 13.5 euros. Is the minimum salary. Is the minimum salary. Okay. Now, that's a cost to the company. And then I have to give you accommodation if you are not from France. Correct, yeah. It's a cost. Of, now they are, they are taking all these because you are not getting skilled labor in the country. Mm. And frankly speaking, the, the skilled labor that is in France now, it is comparatively one-fourth what it used to be. So they are forced to depend upon countries in Asia and mm. Africa to be born of this really. yeah. But do you think like from then, like when you joined to now, is there any change or like this exploitation in general, like in terms of pay, why do you think it exists in India till now, even though now there's a whole shift of more passion driven people coming in and uh, people from, you know, different uh, financial backgrounds as well. But the pay sort of remains the same, it's hardly. That's right. So why are we as people who are in the industry also okay with it? Is another question. To I, I seriously don't know. I don't know what is this uh, chef's association is doing about it or let's say hospitality associations are doing about it. Um, the day when the, the government changes the minimum salary from this amount to that amount and that is the salary again has been revised. It's, mm -hmm. there's, no compar there's no comparatively changed in terms of a salary structure is concerned. I, my first salary was 8,500 pounds. I mean, I was getting the highest. I mean, if, if you see. Back then, yeah. Back then, 8,500. When com compared to someone who is working in, um, let's say, a call center, they were getting uh, at least four times what I was getting. And then you asked me to continue my passion. Yeah, I will continue for learning purpose. Mm. But I realized that there is obviously a comparison because uh, obviously what will happen in the family is that they, you will be compared with your sibling. Siblings. Possibly. And they're telling you, you are working for 16 hours every day and we are working for 9 hours and we are getting a better salary than yours. What are you doing about it? But today when I look back and I say, hmm. yeah, now at least the world knows, hmm. at least the country knows. <laughs> at least I, I was a reason for many people to take baking and pastry as, as a career option. Our vision is to make bakery and pastry education as one of those um, first career options in the country. And this is what we are trying to achieve in this entire process. But hospitality industry needs to be at par with our thought process. It's true. So, since we were discussing, you know, all these different routes that are available now for journalism oh, yes. and uh, the difference in education in India and Paris. Um, like, what education, and this is like a personal question I want to say, since you've uh, been in France, the difference that you see in food journalism, 
in general? Like what sort of educational background do you need to have in France to suppose become say like a food critic, a food writer compared to India, which I mean, I, I think know. he's going to put me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no barriers of entry. But, but let me answer this. Um, no doubt about um, there are great food critics in India, but there are very bad food critics also in India. Okay, the greater ones, they it comes from their experience and so on. So on. the latter part, just because their proficiency in English is on a better way that they can write anything about. But in Europe, it's not a Tom, Dick and Harry who is going to be a food critic. You have to work in the industry for minimum 15 years to be a food critic. Um, you should have minimum number of experience and you have to prove that you are, you can write about the food and you are the chosen one. It is not that you are, I didn't get any other job. So let me start blogging. Let me start writing about the food. Majority of the people who comes to Lavon in the name of food critic, they come there for free food. I have a following. I can influence. I have a following. I can influence. Give me food, food, free food. I'll write about it. The moment when I say sorry, it is being made for everyone. It is not for made for food critic. Then they will write a bad review about the food and they will crucify people and so on. Well. But there are genuine people who have their main intention and their path of life is to be a great critic. I respect that. They work and they, you will not even know that they are in there. Majority of them will come unannounced. Those are professional food critics. Those who come to the cafe announced, they yeah, want food. Like so. But in, in Europe, you won't even know who, who judged your food. Yeah. You don't even know. A lot of the times you don't notice that a critic has come into the restaurant. You won't right? even like, know. They come in disguise or anything. Otherwise, what will happen here is if they announce and come, then you are personally present there. You will ensure that the best of the best thing goes on that table. So you try to be on the top of your game. Top right? of your game. 100%. Rather than what you do every day. So, yeah. So how we kind of like to conclude uh, this po the, the podcast in general is we hold a little rapid fire questions at the end. This is my interview. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. First thing I wanted to ask you was uh, what is your favorite part of your job? I think favorite part in making or in experiencing. Making, I would say, uh, to make a great uh, Viennoisserie and a sourdough, for sure. Second thing to experience is freshly baked Corson smells. What pastry or one product that you think isn't viral yet? Because there's so much stuff going viral, right? Croissants and this and that. What uh, product or a dish do you think should be viral? or should get more limelight that hasn't? I think there are a lot of fake persons um, in the country as well as in international level. Hmm. I think there are so many not so uh, called persons that should exist in the market just because their PR team is good and marketing is great and uh, it became viral. The thing that it should be viral is, I think, I'm going to be very selfish here. Mm. I think the, the croissant that we make, mm. I think we didn't get enough recognition. I think that should go viral. Please make it viral. <laughs> and my next question was, uh, if Lavon never came to be, I'm, I'm glad I'm saying if also at the mm. beginning of the question. So if Lavon never came to be, uh, what, do you, what do you see yourself doing? What would you have seen yourself doing? I don't know. Our time, there were there used to be autographs, uh, ten standard when we are we are graduating or when we pass, there used to be autographs. So if you see my autograph, no one has mentioned that you are going to be a chef. See you as an Etsy chef or whatsoever it is. Everyone thought that I am going to be a musician, a percussionist. Uh, everyone thought that I am going to be a tablist uh, slash um, percussionist, and everyone is shocked when when. When I told that I'm going to do hotel management. Uh, but yeah, I think that answer your question. Do you still play? Yes, I do. Nice. I do. And uh, the next would be, which is a generic one. 
who is your dream collaborator or who would you want to dead or alive who would you want to collaborate for a pastry you know I think you're going to put me in trouble. Uh, but I think uh, I've learned a lot of things from a lot of chefs. But if you genuinely ask me, it is very easy to tell. I want to work with Gordon Ramsay. I'm not even seen him. Instead, what I want to answer is, if God gives me a chance to to give a rebirth to my grandmother, hmm. I really want to learn a lot of things. That time it was too early for me to understand cuisine. but now when we see that there were a lot of things she she tried to teach my mom and uh, her siblings they didn't learn it but given a chance i want to record and i want to write a book only on recipes by your by my grandmother and if you ask me if any of uh, her daughters or son got this talent no no one got this but given a chance if i can go back i don't want to miss this opportunity to learn and taste what my grandmother did and the the food what she cooked it's still in my tongue memory so my last question is uh to- we're well, talking about going back if well not if what is one regret that you have in your career if you could pinpoint one event or one action that had happened is there any regret that you wish that didn't happen or something like that so um when dr abdul kalam was the president and i'm working with the taj and taj decided to cater it and i was heading this entire i it was with the orchid it was with okay. the orchid not with the taj decided to cater uh, to dr abdul kalam and i was was i was very instrumental in creating this experience for dr kalam and then um unfortunately i have to leave 10 minutes before this entire program got over and then doc, dr abdul kalam called every chef and uh, asked for a picture with the chef mm. and the only person that is missing in that picture is me because i have to leave 5 minutes <laughs> and then next month after this entire event happened he passed away so i will never get a chance to i tried to crop my picture and try to face but everyone knows that i made an attempt to do it but yeah that is one of those uh, biggest regret so i missed this opportunity but yeah since you asked this but you didn't have reminded me <laughs> sorry sir <laughs> and i think we're done with the five Very questions out five yeah so no really thank you chef again for for coming on having a great talk it was a huge pleasure on my side uh to to hear about the history to hear about the challenges as well and uh let's let's do this again we'd be happy to come to the cafe as i said we'd we'll love to host you uh i was just going to say i think there is a lot chef of you also have to come over yes please love on uh, uh, any day and i think i would love to have a longer conversation which is uh I think we covered education quite a lot and there's so much more when it comes to I think that. it would be great if you can have an interaction hmm. with our students and tell that how your time how the industry was and what it has been and what has been expected out of them it would be great if you can come and speak to our students about sure. the thing mm-hmm. um just a 19 year old uh, uh, you are 20 now 22 you are yeah. 22 now it would be amazing to hear it from you uh, what you want to tell the students about this one and all the best with recipes thank you so much um, you are already doing a great work and i was i'm uh i'm humble the fact that you considered me as part of a mentor when you decided to start recipes and i will i will continue to be a great mentor for you really great uh, thank you and chef just asked how important mentorship is in this industry and but chef pleasure having you thank you show. thank you so Hopefully. much it means a lot more conversation and thank you and uh, please make our croissant viral yeah croissant viral there's a book coming and a deli cafe <laughs> so we have i think come do come our we'll be happy to host you all <laughs> thank you